The site of Raptors Training Camp, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada's picturesque West Coast, beautiful views, and a time for the Raptors to try and put it all together as they embark on the 23-24 season training camp at the Christine Sinclair Community Center. Welcome inside Burnaby, British Columbia, Paul Jones, alongside radio broadcast partner Eric Smith and E. We've been here all week watching the Raptors put it together. Everything's new. That's been the theme this year. New coach, new players, uh, new attitude, new culture. And one new guy in particular amongst the vets that's going to help with the leadership, and that's Garrett Temple. Yeah, I think he's going to be absolutely huge in the locker room, let alone on the floor. And I think one of the things that, uh, that Coach Darko was talking about when we chatted with him today, Jonesy, is the impact that he can have because of his experience around the league. And I think that's going to be invaluable, especially when you, you factor in, obviously, the absence of Fred Van Vliet. We've been talking both on and off the air this week about the leadership of this team and the void that might be there. But the fact that, well, maybe there isn't really a void because it can be by committee with the core guys that are still here and then adding guys like a Garrett Temple. And I think that's big. And when you look at Otto Porter and Thad Young. The three of them together Garrett again, Temple. right? They, they, had yeah. played, they had played together already. And here they are kind of reincarnated years later. And again, bringing that veteran leadership to I, Toronto. I think it's huge because it's, it's also guys that can still play. Right. Like we, we have yet to really see Otto Porter, but by all accounts, he's healthy. And we will see him at some point in this preseason. And hopefully he plays a part on this team throughout the regular season. And you think back to the role that he had just a couple of years ago in the championship run with the Golden State Warriors. So when you've got vets that can still play, and not just have a voice when they're going out they're actually doing it I think that makes a, a big difference and and I know just after we talked to, to Darko I went over and was, was doing something um, with Chris Boucher a quick little interview and I, I kind of asked him this same question about the leadership and he said you know he acknowledged as well yeah okay Fred's gone but really when you look at the team you lost a key piece of your starting five but the other four pieces are still there. Right. Your primary sixth guy, seventh guy, eighth guy, still there from last year. So the core is there and the guys that, that have, you know, we're talking about what, seven, eight players that are still together. I think that's gonna be invaluable to what uh, Ryakovich and the Raptors are trying to do. Well, you, you talk, we talk about Garrett Temple, but you know, we mentioned him. Thad Young is another guy. Yep. Been around the league a long time, been in Toronto for a while now too and understands what's going on here, understands what has to be done in terms of advancement and, and filling in for some of the leadership that has gone with Fred Van Vliet. One of the other guys that's going to be, I think, a leader on the court, particularly with the style of offense that Darko wants to play is Jakob Pertl. I mean, we saw him in the open scrimmage and I was joking that all we need is the uh, Grateful Dead headband <laughs> tied on the back like Bill Walton had with the Trailblazers in 77. Well, he's got that beard going now too, right? And, and he's just doing a terrific job playing in the high post, facilitating the offense, scoring from there. Mind you, it is training camp and he's playing against his own guys, but that augurs well for what's coming up. Well, and one of the things we've heard quite a bit over the course of this week is he's a better passer than perhaps we've seen. And it's kind of an untapped resource or an untapped skill that, uh, you know, just a different system, different style perhaps than what he was playing last year in Toronto and even going back to his San Antonio days. Uh, I, I think it could be a huge plus for him. And what I'm interested in seeing with him is how active he is as a passer, but then also the guys coming in behind him. You right. talk about Thad Young, Precious Achua, Chris Boucher. It's going to be an adjustment for all of them as well, well but it's and it's a nice wrinkle and it's interesting we've seen that precious Achua with a little bit of a, a groin issue has yep. been held out the last couple of days we see thad young playing in that spot where precious would be as the other five man at the high post at the elbow making those passes and those plays like Jakob well, Pertl. and we've seen it from him quite a bit in the past right i mean even go back to the philadelphia series when when thad young was acquired late in the season and he was a key piece in that first round series against the 76ers so i like what we've seen so far and the other thing i like too with with Jakob is he's been pretty vocal too again it's training camp it's only you know four or five days but he's been more vocal going back to the original point that we were talking about in terms of leadership, I think we're going to see more from him in a lot of ways this season. All right, let's hear from the guy we were just talking about. Here's Jakob Pertl. Uh, first week of training camp, you know, nearing an end. Like, what's different? What's been different about these five days compared to what you're used to in, in Toronto and San Antonio? Uh, I don't know. I felt like it was, it was more or less what I was used to. Um, 
obviously a lot of teaching in the beginning, which uh, depending on the kind of team you have, like for us, like it's a new system, so there's going to be a lot of teaching. If you have a young team, there's going to be a lot of teaching. So there's a little differences in that aspect, but uh, I thought it was a good training camp. How, uh, I know you played a bit of a different offensive role when you were in San Antonio before. It's, it's, what he's asking, the daughter is asking you to do here, how similar is that? Uh, especially my last season in San Antonio, I feel like it was it's a very similar play style. Uh, a lot of playmaking through like trailer or like high post um, positions. Uh, I feel like it's something I'm comfortable with. Like it's something I, I enjoy doing. I, I like trying to find my teammates in situations like that. So uh, it's not unnatural to me. I think there's still some room to grow for me. Like uh, to make those reads. Like get him right almost every time, uh, but yeah, I I'm, I'm feel pretty good about it. How do you feel your teammates are adjusting to it, seeing as you think you might be a little bit more familiar with it? Um, I mean, you, you're going to have to ask them, but it, it seems fine. Like In practice, it's been working well. Like Even in the little scrimmage game we had yesterday, like we got some really good things out of it, so um, I think it's going really well. Uh, obviously, we'll see how, how it works in games and yeah, stuff. How much are you seeing things maybe a level ahead of them because you've got a like you'll see plays that you know what in two weeks we'll get this right now they don't see it um i think i mean we have a lot of experienced guys out there so most guys like get it pretty quickly uh, i think there's some situations where uh like these cuts are going to have to be active almost every single time so you're going to have to like see the ball like uh, there's been a few instances maybe not so much in training camp now but maybe during open gym where guys are still getting used to like you got to keep your head on the swivel at all times because the if you're open, the ball is going to come your way. Uh, so I think those situations, just getting used to that, it, it might be a little bit of a learning curve. But for the most part, I think we got it down. Has it been an adjustment been on the offensive end or the defensive end in terms of learning Darko's system? Uh, I don't think there was a major adjustment uh, in either either side. Obviously, there's some adjustments just as there's different styles. Like we played super aggressive on defense last year. Uh, I think. As far as I can tell now, it's a little bit less uh, less of that. But at the end of the day, every every player is going to have their own defensive identity. Like they're going to have their their strengths and weaknesses, and it doesn't really matter what the system is. You're going to apply those those things to to the um, existing system. The opener, a preseason opener, goes eight o'clock Eastern time, five o'clock Pacific, out here on the left coast with the Toronto Raptors taking on the Sacramento Kings. Let's hear from head coach Darko Ryakovich as he talked about leadership, his coaching staff, and defense. I'm curious about uh, a guy like Garrett Temple. What can he do for you, like even when he's not playing, as far as being like that OG in the locker room? Uh, he is uh, he's amazing. Uh, the way uh, he knows the league, uh, his presence around the players, uh, He's doing great job talking to all the young guys. We had an amazing conversation this uh, this summer once we got him on on our team, and talking to him, I, I thought that I'm talking to to a coach and uh, not, not necessarily to a player. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna rely on him a lot just to to help uh, our whole roster uh, to stay on the path, uh, to understand uh, the, all the challenges that one long season of 82 games brings, and uh, he's gonna be able to help our guys to mature and. Uh, uh, to, to stay, stay on the right path. I wanted to ask you about some of your assistant coaches. Um, you had mentioned the other day that uh, Gemma is going to be looking after the offense. Have you kind of assigned roles for for everybody, and what, what does that look like in terms of the division? For sure. Um, Pat Delaney is our lead assistant coach. Uh, he's going to be overseeing defense. Uh, Jama, as we talked about, he's going to be overseeing uh, offense uh, and special situations. Um, coach uh, uh, James, uh, he will be responsible for helping with offense, but also heavily involved with uh, analytics and analytics projects. Uh, Mike Batiste uh, working with, uh, with our bigs. Uh, Jim Sun uh, working with our young guys, working uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, guys uh, that are out of rotation who are, who are going to be always fighting for getting in the rotation. Um, Ivo Simovic, uh, player development scouting, uh, same thing with uh, 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 Vinny Bavnani, player development scouting. And uh, Coach Mary, uh, she will be responsible with our communication with uh, G League program, assignments, uh, um, Drew Jones, player development, etc., etc. We got, we got big coaching staff. 
How's it been this week with, with you guys as a coaching staff? I know you would have spent a lot of time together over the summer, but do you kind of feel that kind of chemistry between you guys building throughout the week? Yes, definitely. Uh, we went uh, to Las Vegas uh, a couple of days before the start of the Summer League just to start talking about what we want to do, how we want to do it, system, terminology, all of that. Then uh, we spent three weeks together in uh, Los Angeles and we had our coaches retreat there and uh, daily meetings, uh, talk, talking about every single topic uh, that's going to be important for us going into the season. So I think we're in a pr pretty good space now. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, getting ready for for uh, playing uh, regular season games, getting the rhythm of scouting and getting the rhythm of, uh, of playing games. Training camp done. Preseason game number one Sunday from Rogers Arena in Vancouver as the Raptors take on the Sacramento Kings. It wraps up on the 20th of October when they take on the Washington Wizards before the Timberwolves come to open the season at Scotiabank Arena on the 25th of October. Thanks to Eric Smith for joining us. For many talented people you don't see on the other side of the camera and in edit suites, thanks for watching us here on Raptors Today.